Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Lee and Haley podcast. It's called Overtime, and it's brought to you by Damiano. <laughs> right here in Lexington on the heart of UK's campus, you can make reservations, 859-303-8373. It is Italian dining, and you've got pasta, beer, bourbon, pizza. It's the best in town, and they've got some special things in the works, by the way. We'll probably be podcasting from there. Uh, in a couple of weeks, I think, big things on the horizon with another favorite. They've partnered with another favorite. Po- I haven't told you this yet. Mm-mm. Another favorite podcast you and I love and we laugh about all the time. What? And they're the work- one? No, not not. I don't think. It's, oh. But it's another one that. Why we'll, are you doing this? We'll share later. You're not good at keeping. We will share because I like to get you excited, and I see you're excited right now. So I want to get you excited, and we'll be there maybe even with a couple of uh, really big celebrities. Cool. We'll see. Cool. So Sounds great. They're working on that, but anyway. Meanwhile, go see your friends at Damiano. Oh yeah, five hundred three South Upper Street in Lexington, KY. Delicious. Anyway, yeah, welcome to a new episode. We appreciate you tuning in. As always, your quick reminder that the video version of the podcast is on the Kentucky Sports Radio YouTube channel. So you can listen and also watch at the same time. Or if you're just listening, wherever you get your podcast, hello. I just listen. Do you? I see the TV show enough. I don't need to watch us. You watch our TV show? Well, of course I have to. What do you mean? It's part of my job. No, you watch clips later. You don't sit and watch the actual broadcast. We pre-tape by like a a day, and so we can actually watch our show. I see the the broadcast because... I do too. uh, Yeah. I like walk by the TVs that that it's on, but usually we're working again by the time it's airing. Correct. But then oh, I, thank you. And then I have to watch it yeah. to pull clips and yeah. edit those clips yeah. for our social media. And you're sick of yourself pages. by the time you're done with that? I'm sick of you. Why? I don't know. I am universally loved. Well, you know what you were doing to me before we began the podcast? Uh, she goes, uh, give me a minute. And I'm sitting here in silence watching you scroll through your phone as you were canceling subscriptions. I go, to what? You said to hand soap. Who Listen, subscribes to hands? Subscribe and save on Amazon is great if you're getting a bunch of things. So I use the subscribe and save a lot and I'll get the repeat delivery sometimes. But sometimes I'm like, I got the subscribe and save to save on so the initial purchase. To, I'm still talking. It's to, to save on the initial purchase. No, I'm sorry I brought it up because I thought you subscribed to one particular hand soap. No, on Amazon. I thought you got a subscription to Gojo. Gojo? Oh, yeah. Gojo is a hand cleaner that's what you see in service stations. my favorite hand soap guys is Oil mrs rigs. myers mrs myers hand soap get I you some it. gojo rainwater scent is the best Nothing's better than Gojo. I've never even heard of Gojo. You're on an is it oil... a guy named Joe that washes your hands when you're heading out? If you're on an oil rig, you need some Gojo. Oh, it gets the oil off. Oh, better than Blue Dawn? Yeah. Really? It's a man's thing. Comes in a big Well, anyway, tub. I use the subscribe and save a lot. I know a lot of you guys do too. But um, sometimes I'll use it on the initial purchase, and then I decide, like, meh, I don't really need the discount in the future. Or it'll try to send it, and I'm not ready for it. So, yeah, while well, we had a few minutes before we started, I was ordering dog food. I was ordering ant killer. Got a little, a few ants I saw in my house, and I hate them. So I was doing that, and then I thought, well, we got a few minutes. While Anua, our um, editor, was setting us up for the podcast, I had a couple minutes. So I just canceled some subscriptions. But for some reason, that really chapped Lee's ass. <laughs> Because I've never dealt with anyone in my life that is... Lives their own life, and for some reason that annoys you. Conducts a symphony of delivery (laughs) trucks. I don't get... You're a maestro of delivery. You're up there waving your baton. More trucks, less (laughs) trucks, more trucks. Bring me things. Now go away. No, I don't want you now. Now come back. I mean, it's just, it's it's exhausting for me. Well, boy, have I got some news that's going to thrill you. So I have a gate at the end of my driveway. Mm. You have to have a code to get in. I thought that was to protect the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. From no, you. if it'll make you happy, a delivery truck slammed into it and destroyed our gate and it's under repair right now. So do you, are you happy now? I got what I was due. Too many delivery trucks. And one of them was a kid with headphones in and apparently was living his best life and turned off the road into the thing. And absolutely, I think he may have accelerated going into the gate. Mm. So we've been working with FedEx nonstop trying to get that situation 
Mm. Remedied. So he didn't see it? Uh, no, I think he was high on life and just driving. And then Rhodes like, oh, then he used the code after he'd already obliterated the gate. Yeah, what was the point in that? He hit it. It's a very strong, like, iron gate. So he hit it, but not hard enough to make it open so he could drive through it. So then he had to use the code. And then he tried to be squirrely about it and not say anything. Oh, but you saw him on video? Yeah. We were like, well. Yeah. So anyway, um, FedEx has been great to work with about it. But um, yeah, he just thought he was going to show up back at his local hub with the front end destroyed on the van and not say anything. So anyway, we all do stupid things and that's okay. But you got to make it right. So soon I'll have a new gate and all the delivery trucks that I love to call will be back again with a vengeance. What? It's just exhausting. Why is what I do at my personal home exhausting to you? It'd be different if I was getting the deliveries here in the office and they came with a singing telegram every time I got a delivery. Mm. I, I mean, I'm out of stuff all the time. Uh, see, I'm not. I refuse you to run what? out and of the, my just, essentials. And I just minimize. You what does that what? mean? I figure out a way to, like right now, I'm out what of What are you a, doing, brushing a, your teeth with mayonnaise? No, I'm out of an ice machine. My ice maker's not working, and I can't get a refrigerator repairman to come fix it. You've called every refrigerator repairman. I've called... One. Two. Mm-hmm. I've called two. Mm-hmm. And so my option is probably just buy a new refrigerator until I can figure out a person that can fix this. Yeah. But what, you're going to you know, buy a new one, but then wait for someone to fix it and come fix the old one and then return the new one? What, no, what? no, no, no. I, I will make it that executive decision at the appointed time. Lee, we've I been hearing like about it. your refrigerator, I know, for six months. Right now I'm surviving the old-fashioned way. Ice I'm, trays? Ice trays. But I have wow, the, you're sur- Lee, you're such But the way I'm doing it is the old... Everyone used to give me... A, well, they still do. These big ice ball trays, you know, that you make cocktails with. Oh, yeah. You love those. And viewers gave them to you a lot and friends of ours. So when I just want a glass of ice water, I've got big big balls floating in it. <laughs> it happens to me sometimes. And I'm like, what are these doing in here? But I don't like the way my water tastes at all. Like when the ice really starts to melt is when it starts to taste funny. Is it sink water? You're not putting filtered water in the ice trays? I, I don't have a problem with sink water. Oh. But something about... I guess some people call it tap water. I don't know why yeah. I call it sink water. The thing is that something in the plastic mold that makes the... Oh, did you not wash the molds? I do wash. I put them in the, in the dishwasher. Oh, good. On okay. On occasion. But sometimes even then it'll make it have kind of a weird... Yeah. Once Plasticky. it melts into... No, you don't taste it if it's in bourbon. Uh-huh. But it, you do taste it when it's in water. Yeah, that's true. That's true. My waters are mixing. I can't stand a taste that I cannot stand that I experienced this week. I bought these like protein. Victory. Is Vic- I can't stand the taste of victory. I was like, no, no, no. Losing is so much more sweet. No, um, I bought some protein bars recently because, as you guys know, I've been trying to up my protein. And I can't stand. You buy them or were they delivered? They were delivered. Oh, my God. They threw them over the gate. <laughs> and I said, hurrah. Why do you care? Like, why are you so judgmental over things that I do? Like, I don't care what you do you at your house. don't understand. Your fridge is broken. I don't care. You have a problem, though. I don't have a problem. You're borderline. You're borderline. Borderline what? Obsessive with uh, online shopping. No, I'm not. I don't know anyone I live who well within my the means. way you do. I live well within my means, within my budget. That's not the issue. And I never run out of stuff. So I'm sorry that I keep tabs on the things that I need. Like I ordered dog food because this morning I saw I was getting low on little Charlie's dog food. I'm not going to let him have to eat his brother's dog food. They have two different things. See, I think you know that I'm close to the mark here. And the reason I believe that is... Instead of going, oh, you think I have a, pr-? you know, laughing it off like, hey, you're so silly. You're like fighting me. You're upset. How oh, dare you say that? No, I don't. So because so you're what you're clinging. saying isn't true, I need to just giggle about it. If, if I said, you know what your issue is, you, you're always on the methamphetamines. You're <laughs> always just smoking the crack. <laughs> but we all know how ridiculous that is. Yeah, yeah. But when I go, well, because you, you know, I know that that's a ridiculous much. allegation. Yes, that is an. I ridiculous. don't shop. Lee, ordering household items is not shopping too much. It feels like it's out of control to me. <laughs> okay. Well, listen to this. It actually, this is going to shock you, has nothing to do with you. 
Well, that's what... Like, what they, are you answering the door at my house? What are you, my butler can, that's having to take that, these deliveries? That is what every person says when the intervention starts. Okay. It has nothing to do with you people. You're right. I should let my dog run out of food. Why would your dog run out of food? Because there's only so much in each dog food bag. It's not a stop, carpet bag you, for Mary Poppins. You can stop and get it if you wanted we, we work right next to a grocery well, store. Well, why don't you buy a fridge instead of bitching about yours I for six months? I haven't bitched about it. I was I've heard you complain that about as it. As an example. You all the time are like, oh, my fridge is out. It is out. I'm more frustrated that these guys But I don't cut you to your up. core about that. I, like, if you don't care you about your fridge working, who cares? And then you just, just because I order stuff, you try to act like there's something wrong. There's nothing wrong. Again, I'm not spending can too we, much. Let's get let's dive down on this. Cut dive you, down. Cut you to your core. Yeah, you're being mean to me. You're being <laughs> critical, and it's not I, nice. I am not being critical or mean. Where was the praise in saying <laughs> well, there's you no have no a praise. problem? You shop too much. <laughs> well, I just pointed that out because I care. You think I have a problem? Where what? I, I'm I'm spending all my money and then some. It's not about money. Then what is the problem? It's about You think I'm making these delivery people work too hard? No. It's about your obsessive behavior with uh, buying and selling things. You're always giving it back, bringing it in, giving it back. The transactional I'm an importer, exporter. space <laughs> that you have filled up in your brain. I don't know how you do it. If that gives you, if that makes you happy, then okay. Oh, bull. That's fine. No. If that's what it oh, is. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you've decided it's fine. Want to say something? What? New socks? No, you bought me these during like a shoot like three years I ago. Did? You did like we did like a Disney on a budget and you bought a three pack of <laughs> Disney themed socks. Oh, yeah, I love sure. them. There's like a black pair, a gray oh, really? pair and a white pair. These are Cinderella themed and it just says hashtag Royals on it with Cinderella and Prince Charming. Well, they are cute. I just took my tennis shoes off and I just thought you're going to love them. Yeah. Anyway, um... By the way, I also I owe uh, an apology to me, <laughs> not to you, <laughs> to uh, the uh, coaching staff at the University of Kentucky. Yes, they reached out to me and said, "Tell him whenever <laughs> he's ready." <laughs> <laughs> and when okay. I see my buddy uh, Big Dog Vince, I'm going to tell him, "My goodness, man, you guys did a heck of a job on what it. a game!" Yes, they lost by one point to Georgia in the most recent game, but it felt honestly. The closest thing to a victory that the, we could have gotten. The miracle itself is not the great game plan they established and the way the kids played hard. It's that they somehow rescued that psyche that had to have been completely broken oh, yeah. after that debacle out South Carolina yeah. and find a way to motivate them to play as hard and as tough and as smart as they did. Mm -hmm. I wish they had it was won. Amazing. And, you know, with... Uh, one or two calls that would have gone our way yeah. or a fumble that we should have pounced on. We could have, but I mean, I had, and because I was talking, I think last week about moral victories and blah, 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 and all that stuff. But yeah, uh, this was a moral victory in a way. Yeah, absolutely. Because now I think the season starts over. It's brand new. It kind of, Yeah. It's like, okay, we you clean guys that slate. Now no, you can beat anybody. You yeah. can, you, you have that ability to beat anyone. Mm -hmm. Go do it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, my Tennessee Vols barely came away with a win as no, well. <laughs> what are they ranked now? Uh, like fourth? I actually don't even know what the ranking is. They won like 71 to zero. And I thought it was interesting. And it's I thought this was kind of a good philosophy. Why would you do that? 71 to zero. I'll tell you why I did it. <laughs> I don't know, Lee. But actually, Coach Heupel, the Tennessee head coach after the game, said each week for us, it doesn't even matter who the opponent is. He said the opponent is nameless, faceless. We go out and we smash no matter what. I'm well, paraphrasing the smashing part. But he said the, our opponent, when we're practicing, is nameless, is faceless. Sounds like good billboard material for my guys. Because after, yeah. after we win, you let them know who your name is. You just got beat by Kentucky. Are you talking about when Kentucky beats Tennessee yes. this year? Yes. Okay. Let's make a bet. Oh, you don't want to? Maybe. Well, no. We'll see. You just talked some mad smack, bro. I just said. And you know, I cheer for Kentucky, too. So that game is very always tough for me. Mm. But um, Tennessee's so good. I feel like I just love him. Nico Iamaliava. Suave. Nico. No. You're an idiot. What was I about to look up? Oh, um, 
NCAA during this week. Football. So I don't know when you're listening to this podcast, but at the time of this ta- taping, it is uh, September the 17th. Top 25, Texas, number one. Yeah, because of Georgia almost got beat by Kentucky. Yeah, which is and ridiculous. Texas had a huge win. So uh, Tennessee is ranked sixth, to answer your question. Sixth. Okay. The top six, ten- Texas, Georgia, Ohio State, Alabama, Ole Miss, Tennessee. Let's round out the top ten. Missouri, Miami, Florida, uh, Oregon, and Penn State. Yeah, now Kentucky's got to play still. I mean, they they played number one Georgia. Now they got to they still have to play Ole Miss at Ole Miss, and they got to play Tennessee at Tennessee. Yes, they yes. do have Auburn coming in. I don't. know. I what, might be going to Ole Miss. My niece um, is uh, in college now, her freshman year at Ole Miss, and so I might be going down for the Kentucky Ole Miss game. I went to the Ole Miss game a couple of years ago. Yeah, you did. I remember that. And went to the Grove. And my God, why in the world a young man doesn't choose Ole Miss? The is ladies beyond me. They're gorgeous. My niece is gorgeous. My, one of my friends from high school that went there, absolutely gorgeous. Any t- pictures you see, they're I was breathtaking. Talking to a buddy of mine, former basketball player at the number one basketball program, and Kentucky, and he was uh, telling me that he used to date a girl. And he goes, she was beautiful. And she was thinking about, he goes, when I was getting out of high school, she was thinking about going to Ole Miss and she went for a visit. She said, I I just don't have enough confidence to go there. He said, she said, the women there are so amazing. I'm below average. And he goes, and that just shook me to my core. Like, what are you talking talking about? about? You're a beautiful girl. Until you get to the Grove and you're walking around. I swear to you, I remember looking at my buddies, these old middle-aged men, fat. And I I said, it's like this place was invaded by a planet of aliens that is nothing but a beauty pageant. Mm -hmm. The whole race is just beauty pageant winners. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. All you have to do is parade a young guy around and go, you want to come play football for us, son? Sure. Yes, I do. Yeah, absolutely. Jeez. Now you're going to one of the on the road games, aren't you? When Kentucky travels, I'm, if you want to yeah, say, I'm going to Texas. I think I'm going to Austin. Yeah, love it. Never been there, and I think I want to do that. So I'm going to try to do that. Oh, it's going to be great. Yeah, that'll be fun. Um, what else is going on? Mm, well, I um, what am I doing? I've got. Uh, well, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about that yet. No one knows what you're talking about. I know, but I'm talking so to So talk to yourself I mean, and don't I'm, say whatever it is you don't want to say. I'm, I'll figure that out in a minute. I don't want to mention that yet. Cool. That's two things you've brought up on the podcast that you don't want to talk you're about. You're going to be shocked when I tell you what uh, our friends at Damiano's have planned, though. Yeah. I can't wait to tell the audience and I can't wait to tell you. But it's, it's a big deal. Hopefully this works out. Sure. Either way, we're going to have fun. I love to have fun. Like, I've been a big fun girl my whole life. Love to do it. Love to have it. You're a fun girl? I'm a fun girl. I love to have fun. Love it. Um, I heard an interesting stat the other day that said, oh, shit. Now that I've brought it up, I can't think of what it was. It basically was saying, what was it? What's the topic? It was something about how laughing can replace a certain supplement that you have to take. It has the same studies have shown a certain amount of laughing every day provided the same health benefits as X, but I can't remember what it dopamine? was. Dopamine? No, it's not dopamine. It? Was it like an was it like a certain type of exercise? Was oh. it a certain supplement? Was it a, like I can't remember what it was. Anyway, whatever it was, it was saying like studies have shown that laughter has the same type benefit. So really, laughter is just so wonderful. And that's why I like to have fun. Cardio? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Let me maybe. tell you all something that I'm addicted to right now. And I don't see it ending anytime soon. I've recently switched up my morning routine. I've given up meth. It's strictly heroin mm-hmm. at this point. No. Um, seek help. Um, every morning I used to get up get my cup of coffee, stumble to my coffee chair and sit there. I've started this whole new routine in the last couple of weeks. I was telling Leah knew about it the other day and I'm now addicted to it. First thing I get up, I get my coffee, I put it in a to-go tumbler and I immediately take my dogs on like a 15 minute walk. So you walk. Yeah. So I walk, but also walk with them and I'm getting out, getting fresh air, slowly waking up. 
because I'd get my coffee and sit in my coffee chair and instantly do the thing that we all know is bad for us. Yeah, we do it. Instantly get on my phone. Start checking the news. Start checking Twitter. Start checking Instagram. Start checking my emails. first? Well, yeah, but I mean, I feel like that goes without saying. Well, you don't go outside to do that? No, I let my dogs go outside. Yeah. Have you ever peed outdoors? I'm sure you have. Oh, yeah. I did it like last week. There is something healthy about that. There needs to be a study done. Mm-hmm. It's a better For way women, to go. For women, you got to have thigh strength. Because well, you got to get good, in such a wide stance. Good way to build it. And you got to get the, yeah. yeah. And why not do that? I mean, think about this. I'm going to try to talk you into this. Okay. When you go on your walk, I go outside. I just said I did it last week. Okay. I mean, I don't do it in the mornings. No, when you go on your daily walk now. Okay. Don't pee in your restroom. Go outside to pee with the dogs. But Lee, I have neighbors. They're not going to see you. How do you know? Hide behind a bush, for crying out loud. But you're going to enjoy the fresh air. You're going to develop uh, better thighs. Yeah. And then you're going to take a shower anyway. It, right? Don't you take a shower? Every day, Lee. <laughs> yeah, before you come to work? Or yeah. Do you do it? Some people take showers at night. I never understood that. I'm only a night shower if it's like I've been at the beach or the pool or working out or something like that. I'm a morning shower. I still always would have, have to been. take a shower in the morning. I can't go someplace not fresh. True. I feel really weird if I do. Let's take a moment for our Lee and Haley listeners to remind you there's a lot on the line this election from protecting the Social Security you've earned to supporting family caregivers. And you have the power to make the candidates listen because voters 50 and over decide elections. That's exactly right, Lee. That's why AARP Kentucky has created an election guide with the most up-to-date information about when, where, and how to vote. Make sure the candidates hear from you. Get trusted election information at aarp.org slash kyvotes. That's aarp.org slash kyvotes. This ad brought to you by AARP. Now, back to the show. Yeah, I've started this routine, and the starting my morning with a little bit of light exercise. I'm not walking fast. It's like a stroll with my dogs. But having my coffee slowly, slowly waking up, the fresh air, just kind of thinking over my day, getting my head together. Oh my gosh, it's true what they say. Getting on your phone and inundating your brain and your soul with all the media of the day, the the hellscape that is our world these days. Um, Really um, totally different vibes. Like I feel calmer. I feel more centered. I feel more relaxed. I feel more ready for the day. This morning when I got up, I was so disappointed. It was raining at my house and I couldn't take him right away. So I sat and had my coffee in my house. What's wrong with getting wet? My dogs, Lee. Well, take yourself out there. A little rain No, the whole thing is they want to walk too. Well, so what if they get wet? Dry them off. (sighs) Yay, who has no dogs. Like, you have a lot of opinions for someone. You let so just the mildest interference keep you from Because you keep trying joy. to tell me what to do, and it's just I'm not, not trying, no need, Lee. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm telling you what to do. I am telling you what to no, do. No, it was raining, and I didn't want to get rained on my dog, So, but it stopped raining after like a half hour, so I took him out after I got ready. So I got oh. my coffee and went ahead and got ready for work, showered all that. As you know, and then I took them, and I, it was the same feeling even an hour in, too. So I was like, okay, well. Then you have to dry them off? No, I just said it had stopped raining. You're going to tell me they didn't get their little feet wet? Maybe, but. Yeah, you got to towel them off when they come in. Otherwise, they drag mud Imagine everywhere. Imagine had I walked them earlier, Lee, and I had to towel off their feet and their bodies. You have to do it anyways, what I'm talking about. No, I don't. Let me tell you something nice. When I walk every day, as you know, and I get back to my place, sometimes I get caught in a torrential downpour. Mm -hmm. I get in my garage, strip naked, go upstairs, take a shower. feels great. Should I tell my dogs to do that? Is that what you're saying? No, there's nothing. You think it'd be great to walk in the rain? Yes, it is. Yeah. No, I'm not doing that. (laughs) Okay, you're missing out. You You, do you, weirdo, but I'll do me. I've been walking, so everything that you said, I validate. I I agree with. Just because you don't know how to check the weather before you walk doesn't mean I don't. I just don't know how to check it. No, you do know how, you just don't. Well, you like to, to always act like every you had no you always like to act caught by every situation around you like I can't believe this happened to me. Well, because I don't necessarily preventable, informationally available situations no i may know there's a possibility of it i don't trust those do you even have an umbrella yeah i got one in my car you've borrowed it many a time why don't you take it with you on your walk though 
What do you I'm think you look gonna stupid? I'm going to bring an umbrella. Because not... I'm too manly. No, if it's, if it's raining, then I will cancel the walk because I'm doing two miles, not just out in the backyard. So I'm not going to come to work but if you've wet. Walked, but no, a lot of times in the afternoon you'll say, oh, I got... Well, what you're saying is I should have an umbrella here handy. Yeah. Yeah, that that's not a bad idea. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Hello. Don't do it. <laughs> I lost my sneeze. I, know. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. Um, I had a sneezing attack. Anytime, it's automatic, as you know, and David Letterman is the one who brought this to my attention. I went, oh, my God, he's right. Okay. Anytime you pluck a nose hair, it's an automatic sneeze. I don't pluck my nose hairs but well we need to talk about that <laughs> oh, do we? wow yeah if you pluck oh, a nose yeah. hair it's like oh uh, no oh you can feel it up in your brain and i thought about you because i went on like an eight in a row sneeze oh fit. i'm so jealous i didn't enjoy that at all i, I, I can't it. watch i can't concentrate i've been overtaken by the sneeze demon. you do you show a great deal of embarrassment when you sneeze it's weird i'm not embarrassed honestly i'm proud i'm like yeah the power in this head Oh, you, every time you sneeze, you're like, <laughs> you like trying I'm, to hide your whole I'm, face. Like, I think if you had a cloak, you would hide under it. I would love a cloak. I wish you had I mean, been, When I was a kid, I was obsessed with the idea of a cloak. I'm going to get a sneeze cloak. Mm -hmm. There was a parody movie, I believe, with Leslie Nielsen called Spy Hard. Mm -hmm. And he played a spy and he had a cloak in one scene. And when I was a kid, my siblings and I, after we watched that, we would hold our blankets around our necks and run through the house. Mm -hmm. Not a cape. A right. cloak. cloak. We yeah. used it to hide ourselves. Mm -hmm. You're watching Spy Hard. Oh. Weird Al Yankovic did the song for it. By the way, we also uh, will take comments or questions from everyone. Yes, we will. Send those to ideas at Lee and Haley dot com. Yeah. Is there uh, something uh, that we got? I'm trying to think. There was. Was it there? Or did we read that one already? Lane, well, no one knows what you're talking about. Huh? Uh, a, a comment from a listener who wanted us to discuss something. That's what I'm looking for right now. Yeah. By the way, our buddy, uh, Noah Day, is over in jolly old England. Jolly old. He's been on a two-week vacation with Kelsey, his absolutely adorable and I, wife. I looked at her pictures that she posted, and they look like they're having a fantastic time. What if she posted pictures and she looks miserable? How much would that chap your butt? That's a great idea. Next next time I go on a vacation or something, just look like I'm miserable. Why? I think it'd be funny. So people like are every like photo, just frowning. Yeah. Looking down. <laughs> Yet you still post it. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. That'd be great. Um Okay. So how much are you walking these days? And have you incorporated strength work like your doctor told you to a few weeks ago? No. I can't do that yet until the back heals. So I, I got to wait. Yeah. I sure. was uh, yesterday talking to my buddy uh, Richard. Now, his brother is a notorious prankster. And, and I want to get in on the, the fun. But his brother is like one of the world's greatest. Mm -hmm. The things that he does. I've told you about some of the disguises that he wears at airports. Oh, yeah. He'll, anytime he has to pick up. He, he did one last year. This time last year, I was out in San Francisco um, with Richard. And we um, we're going to watch the 49ers play the Giants. Well, Richard was on a different flight than I was. Sure. And, and he catches the flight in... Put your phone on silent. It is on silent. I just heard it go off. I didn't hear anything. And you really, you really are behaving badly. <laughs> that's, 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 you what? I don't well, understand you. I don't understand you. Well, now we understand each other. <laughs> so, uh, Ronnie, spit it out. Somehow Fudge. figured out Richard's flight itinerary. Met him in Dallas, not to say hello. But to scare him. Yeah. And when Richard sat down on the seat, and, you know, Richard has to do first class, of course. It was so funny. Ronnie he had his crazy disguise on, like mustache, sunglasses, wig. Yeah. 
Richard doesn't recognize because Richard's got his head down. He wants to work on his laptop and do whatever. Ronnie starts laying on top of him, like in the seat, moving around, and Richard's getting really angry. Uh, yeah, I don't Who want a stranger laying on me. Giant person touching sitting. me at all. It's somehow, but Ronnie got the airline to tell him which seat his brother was in. That's which fantastic. usually, which they honestly, won't do it. you shouldn't. But well, he said, "Is there another person with my last name that is gonna yeah on the plane and are what they seat are on this seat?" Yeah. And they are said, they yes. on this seat? Yeah, they on this seat. But one of the things he did to one of his buddies, he stole his mailbox. It's one of those decorative carved mailboxes. I know this is a federal crime. And we should report it. Yeah, took a chainsaw. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was a wood it was a really nice mailbox. Uh. And everybody was suspicious it was Ronnie. He's like, I didn't do it. Didn't do it. But every week he would get a photo in the mail. Of his mailbox mm -hmm. <laughs> that mm -hmm. was being held hostage. Mm -hmm. And they go, Ronnie, I know it's you. It's yeah. not, not me. How long before he gave it to him? I don't know if he did. When we were kids, my <laughs> mom and her best friend were, would always prank each other. And it became this, somehow flamingos got involved. Mm -hmm. Plastic lawn flamingos. Yeah, I remember those. Yes, and it became every time one of us, either our family was on vacation or they were on vacation, whenever you came home, your front yard was filled with hundreds of plastic pink flamingos mm. we'd come home for vacation we'd be like oh, great and us kids were like hee -hee. my mom's like i gotta take it and became so well when we were kids my mom would take us with her to put them in their yard mm -hmm. so it just became this stupid thing so no anyway hello miss cindy or as my brother called her when she was little miss cindy miss cindy and then she always tried to get us to call her a uh, uh, youthful aunt cindy and my brother got confused and called her Useful Aunt Cindy. Useful Aunt Cindy. She was like, hey. <laughs> yeah, she was like, go tell your mother that you saw Youthful Aunt Cindy. Mm -hmm. And he'd say, I saw Useful Aunt Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Useful Aunt Cindy. Useful Aunt Cindy. Yeah, there she is. Well, my little brother could not say Granny Falk's name to save his life. For, Yikes. For a year or two. Mm, that's that rough. was not good. Yeah, that's rough. Okay, have we got any questions? Yeah, there's uh, Kelly writes, uh, what's one fall vacation spot you want to go to? I would like to go to Vermont. Mm -hmm. I've never been there. I want to go to Vermont and see the fall leaves. Like, that is really a bucket list item for me. Yeah. I think most people think New England. Yeah. Because of the color. Yeah. yeah. So for me, it's Vermont. I don't what? know what else there would be. I mean, fall. It's what is Vermont or nothing for Lee? Well, I'm not. It doesn't have to be Vermont, but it, New England. So yeah. any of those states. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know where else you would go in the fall. I mean, the south where we live is pretty pretty. The mountains, anywhere mountainous, mm -hmm. gorgeous, great weather to go hiking. I'm a beach girl. I'm a beach girl. Uh, Bridget writes, what's something that isn't food, but you want to chew on? Dua Lipa. <laughs> what about you? I know that you're serious. Um, <laughs> when I was a kid, this is so weird. And I haven't done it in a long time, but I would. When we were kids, and because I'm a loofah girl now. But when I was a kid, we would use washcloths in the bath. I never did use and a when washcloth. You, not once in my life. Really? We used washcloths in the bath. And when it get really wet, I'd crunch it between my teeth. And the water would run out of it, like squish the water out. I know this is so weird, but I'm just it didn't have soap in it, right? No, it was just water. Oh, because I was I'd wring it out, it, uh, so, wring yeah, it out. I but then it. when you bite down on it, then all yeah. the water has to come out, and it was this like squishy right. water, tactile. Mm -hmm. And then it would get all of it out, but you still this. Ch I don't know. I just loved chewing on that. Right. I have no idea why. Mm. Have you ever done the thing where you chew on tin foil and they say it electrocute? Not electrocute you, but gives you like a little zap. Oh, yeah. No, I've done. See that? That makes, I know that makes my skin. I don't think I've ever done it. But that's maybe I did when I was a sensitive kid. to my teeth. Right. If I did it, I'd be like, Hugh. but that's something I like to chew on. Mm. I like. Oh, I also liked to chew on chili. Chili. I also liked to chew on silly putty when I was a kid. Same thing. Didn't swallow it, Ugh. and honestly, don't do it. Now I will tell you what. But I... chewing on it, it's like it was this part. Something about the like density of something in between my teeth felt really soothing. Well, I guess if there's a weird thing I do on occasion, it's rare, but it's a toenail. Not not mine. But <laughs> no. Oh, no, what it, no, it's a straw. Ah. Like if if I got a to go drink or whatever, and if here's the weird thing, if I have gum in my mouth, like a I, plastic straw? Yeah, plastic straw. Okay. Then I will start to and it has to be a, a straw with real ri rigidity that Yeah. It pops almost, you know, pops yep. back into shape. Oh, yeah. I'm right there with you. 
Oh, I love this. And then I'll combine that with the gum. Oh, and man. now I'm and I, the straw gets smaller and smaller as it's wrapped into the gum, and I'm chewing on a straw and and bubble gum mm-hmm. in one big concoction. And it's satisfying for some yeah, reason. Yeah, it is. It is not. It's not very tasteful. No. <laughs> I know you meant to say tasty, but you said tasteful as if like, <laughs> I know it's not decent to do this. It isn't. It isn't I know decent. people think less of me when they say Well, it. I was in front of the queen when I did it. <laughs> Gosh, she has no cooth. No. What is wrong with that man? <laughs> I, I can, I, I'm right there with you. I bet that but would feel really good. the satisfaction of the. It's the density uh, of it. And the resistance. Yeah. It kind of gives The bounce you, back. Yeah. When you're doing it. It's like, I guess, when football players chew on their mouthpiece. Yeah, you know you can't bite through it, but something about it, it's like it gives, it's its fighting you a little bit. Yeah, but it, it's fighting you. It d- does have some give. A little give. And a straw with but chewing it, gum wrapped around it does have a lot of give. And it's all, oh, it's satisfying. Humans are so weird. It is so satisfying. Everything you're saying, I've I love. I've never spoken about that ever in my life. Isn't that fun to just admit your weirdness? Yeah. It's so good. Mm-hmm. Um. Speaking of other weirdness, my little brother cannot stand the feeling of paper wrap straws. When I was on vacation, our whole family at dinner, we all started talking about what are weird things that bother us. And I said mine was I can't stand velvet or velour or crushed mm-hmm. velvet or anything like that. I can't stand It's like when the fibers are short like that. And if yeah. I can feel them moving under my skin, makes the skin crawl. Um, that's mine. My brother said he... Oftentimes, my sister-in-law was like, oh, Jack, my brother, she was like, he, anytime we're at a restaurant, we have to open straws that are covered in plastic. He's fine. He can just pop it off. But if it's covered in paper, something about that with the straw, it makes him, she has to open his paper straw, paper covered straws. Hers is she cannot sleep if there's a crease in her sheets under her. Oh. Like she had the, the sheet, the flat sheet or the fitted sheet has to be completely taut. She was like, I can feel even the tiniest crease under me and I can't deal with it. Jeez. Yeah. I can sleep on anything. And that's love, baby. (laughs) Okay, guys, I believe that is going to do it for this week's episode. Stay tuned for exciting news whenever Lee decides to share it with me and the rest of you guys about our sponsor this week, Damiano Pizza, Pasta, Beers, Wings, whatever you need, babe. Go see our friends. They are located on UK's campus. They have a fantastic seven-hour-long happy hour, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Great deals on food and drinks. Yep, that's it, guys. We'll be back next week. Thank you so much for listening to Lee and Haley Overtime, the podcast. See you soon. Bye.